Hello viewers, welcome to Africa and Beyond Television Network. And this morning, let us talk about what is happening in the nation of Zimbabwe. Citizens President Advocate Noson Jamisa has addressed Zimbabwe's education policy and curricula. It's something very important. It's something which parents have been complaining for a very long time. Uh, now, we were finding it difficult even to help our kids with some uh, homework. It was uh, quite difficult for us to be able to do so. But uh, President Noson Jamisa has finally addressed this issue and we need to take a look onto what he said and critically have a view and an understanding of where this nation is supposed to be going. So it's very important for us in Zimbabwe not to miss this um, uh, important educative um, address from the president himself because he reflects the direction which the nation was supposed to be taking. So he says building a formidable modern education system preparing Zimbabwe for the fourth industrial revolution. So what is very important is to understand the aim of the education policy. An education policy cannot be said, we have implemented an education policy. What is your goal? What do you want to achieve? So I will give you an example. When you take in to train somebody, to train him to become a pilot, at the end of the course, that person must be able to fly a plane without you. That person must be able to fly a plane. And that person must be able also to assist others or to educate others on how to fly a plane. That is education. As for me, that's, that is what I call education. So we are saying we must have an output. And what are we targeting to achieve after educating our children? I will not simply send my, 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 my child to grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, up to grade 7, to form 4, to form 6, to university, uh, for, for him to, to be selling airtime in the streets. No. If I wanted him to sell airtime in the streets, I could say, okay, go and learn to read and write. Go and learn to count notes and coins. Go to and learn to divide, to subtract, to, to add. Then uh, you, you are good to go. You can be a vendor. You can start selling airtime. But I, I, I'm sending my child up to university because I want that child to be, to be part of the economy, the growing economy. That is what is very important. So as a nation, we have a learning population or a learning hungry population, which is prioritizing education. So, um, sorry, prioritizing education policy then becomes paramount and becomes more important. And um, President Nelson Chamisa emphasized that during the campaigns, he made a very strong case about color. He was always speaking about scraping of color because it was a burden to the parents. It was a burden to, 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 to the people who are paying fees. Just imagine that I'm paying fees for my son or for my children. Then I'm becoming burdened to give the same people much education which they're supposed to be getting at school. So uh, you see, the government of Zimbabwe then was forced to remove this color or continuous assessment learning activity. And um, th this is because of escalating pressure from the learners and the parents. And they replaced it with what they call heritage-based education curriculum. So the government admitted that um, the color system was a failed experiment and um, it unfairly jeopardized the generation. These are so many people who were part of uh, uh, um, this education system who have been affected so far. They've been affected. So the education policy or any policy for that matter, it must go undergo a very rigorous testing before it is implemented. And that is because the future is at stake. So if you take a look on the past, uh, education policies uh, would come, would be implemented without consulting the people. This is where the emphasis of President Nelson Chamisa is. He says we must make sure that we don't go through the same way the color system, the heritage-based curriculum have gone. This is a, a, a dungeon of failure. These policies have gone through a dungeon of failure, and it's, it's a con command uh, curriculum 
which is being imposed on people without even consultation to see how it can it work. So you would see that um, at the end, it is going to fail. So citizenocracy must always be at the center. Citizens must be at the center of policy development and implementation. We have parents in the urban areas, in the peri-urban areas. All these people must be included in policy making. Hear ideas, hear contents of parents before you implement anything. And uh, you know, uh, the more public participate, the more uh, the final decisions are made, and the more you you agree and and um, and connect on a certain policy because you are on the same page. It was thought thoroughly. What I think, what you think, what we think, then becomes or brings something which is more tangible and um, uh, more implementable than the nonsense we saw with, with color. So he says we must construct policies through consultation and collaboration and uh, with global education experts, educators, school development bodies, industry, business stakeholders, and those with parental responsibilities. You cannot simply impose a policy. Who is going to employ these people? What are the expectations of the industry? So all these things must be put into consideration to say, okay, what do we need to fulfill? Okay, we've educated these people. What does the industry expect to, 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 to tap from our, our learners? So that is very, very, very important. You see, Kuti, um, if we fail to do that, then we are training uh, people for nothing, for nothing and nothing. So... You see that right now we are running in, in, into a new generation, into a new era of technology, of AI, artificial intelligence, which means artificial intelligence is going to replace certain courses, going to replace certain uh, um, uh, uh, programs. And you, 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 when you are developing a policy, you, you need to put that into cognizance. So that is very, very, very important. So you see that the problem we have in Zimbabwe is that a policy will be developed from the top. Yet, President Oso Chamisa is saying we need to develop a policy from the bottom. That is what is very important. Bottom-up policies um, uh, can, can, uh, are more uh, are important and they give better results than top to, to, to bottom uh, policies. So um, you, you, you see that um, that is what is very, very important. He says public consultation in policy making boosts the stakeholder and citizen buy-in. It improves transparency, in, it increases efficiency and effectiveness of policies and regulations. So, you know, these policies must be uh, forward thinking, uh, must be forward thinking, considering both global and local development needs and trends. Uh, we talked about this, and uh, you, you must make sure that you equip your youth with uh, future ready skills. And uh, we, we, are, we were supposed to focus on opportunities and effectively and efficaciously cater for the demands of, of the future. We can change our future only if we think differently. So you see that, okay, AI is developing much faster, which means our education policy must be based on making sure that people understand how to use computers, how to use technology, how to use AI. Those are the major factors which must drive um, uh, uh, formulation of policies. So you see that, yes, human capital is very important and um, it's part of, 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 uh, of, of, uh, 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 of the production cycle. So human capital is very, 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 very vital. And um, you, you see that other nations, they've invested greatly in human capital because they know that one way or the other, you will need human capital. And that is the reason why their economies are flourishing, their economies are moving. So you see that we need a well-funded education system and um, that education system must be sensitive, must be responsive to the needs and requirements of pupils, parents, teachers, um, so that everything is then uh, covered and it becomes the, the, the fundamental. So you see that President Nelson Chamisa says, our aim is to turn Zimbabwe into a business hub, tech hub and education hub of the world. To achieve this, we must take bold steps and make revolutionary moves. And uh, in a new great Zimbabwe, he says, or he promises that you turn things around and uh, become a superpower 
in the next three decades. So for the next 10 years, we have three key revolutions blockchains. That is AI and biotech revolution. These things will happen whether you like it or not, they will happen. So the rapid speed at which these technologies, AI, quantum computing and metaverse and others are evolving, uh, will be a pressing question, especially as we try to grapple with the challenges relative to this constant evolution. So uh, you will see that Zimbabwe, Ichirukutara, about Starlink, this, that, Vachirambit, and other countries are moving. So we must be ready to use emerging technologies and AI to govern better, making better, our government systems trustworthy, inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Nothing can be made right in bits and pieces. We need a major game-changing and unheard type of reforms, wholly and totally. And uh, we need to restructure the education system the system is teaching a lot of wrong lessons. So I always say that, um, you know, when 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 you have your child, the greater chances are that Anita Umbava because those So when I know that the language or the environment So we must focus on entrepreneurship. We must not create employees without creating employers. The more you create employers, the more you create jobs, the more employees are employed, and you always have a deficit of employees, then you take from other countries and you, you balance off. So we must make sure that we teach leadership and citizenship it, uh, from kindergarten right up to tertiary levels and it's a very strategic idea because when he's young so the education system is designed to prepare laborers and workers we must produce employers and entrepreneurs more we must teach that mastering a skill is not more valuable than memorizing a subject yes he tied a very important issue there is an issue about memorizing a subject where somebody is simply memorizing for the exam. That person will pass the exam, but will not have an idea about the skill itself. So the education curriculum must intentionally balance between academic and vocational education. You know, those no things that you you understand that this kid is more brilliant than or you could work. So memorize only to become a lawyer. But is that person a lawyer? Is not a lawyer. So you see, Kuti, it takes a lot. It's not about education. It takes a lot for you to be a lawyer who win cases. That is the reason why you see a lot of lawyers in Zimbabwe, they win through Shoko Mongwe. And I think that you be got I say it no longer. But you are winning, not on merit. So we need people who are going to get into positions on merit, and that is very, very important. And if you balance between academic and vocational education, then you are good to go. For example, I always tell people that personally, I know 17 skills, 17, 17 skills, which I know and which I can perform, which I can do, which means um, this is natural. But of all those 17 skills, only a few does have paperwork. Which means I will go and say I'm a carpenter, and people will say, "Okay, show us the parakoku to your class what carpenter." And I say I don't have. They'll say, "Okay, we cannot employ you simply because they cannot test me to see how good I am in carpentry. They will never do that." So you see, if we revolution uh, revolutionize our nation, our economy, if I say I'm a welder, you don't need to test me through a certificate, give me a welding machine, give me a rod, give me simbi. Then they say, young man, you are a welder. And I say, yes, two buttons are simbi. My knowledge, Makai Tarisa, it will show you with Naruza Zarquit. First thing is to know how connections are done. Secondly, Kuzati, what kind of uh, steel do I have? Simbi in the EP, you know the road rakaita say, pan bandruku shandana popakaita say, pano da kuita say, all those things, those are meaning a fanotarisa. Kutu kutarisa, I'm a class one, a welding, mototinga happy in the bus. 
then those ones will cura any cases also. So you see that uh, it says in addition, foreign languages and local languages should be introduced to the school subjects. For example, I can tell you, but it is when we grew up, we never learned in the belly at school. We never learned Shangani. We never learned other important languages. Just imagine if it's compulsory to learn the belly at school, especially when you are coming from the national and regions. Quite an up to a time on the language swap, where if you are in my in national and region, you are learning more at school about the belly, uh, learning more about other languages to say to not turn a time equity. We are speaking in the belly, we are speaking in this language, we are speaking in this language, and you 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 can even have um make sure kuti it's never we are not going to those languages who are within the schools if possible my trend of not very underprivileged from other schools and you do them around the nation so as to teach other kids my languages just imagine which are not watching i'm going to teach you that gonna six seven languages the economy the country will be seamless you will deal away with the issues of racism of um tribalism because when i go to my table i am fluent in the belly if i go to uh being i'm fluent in tonga if i go to big bridge i'm fluent in venda i'm fluent in shangani which means you will never understand but in the Murudzi, we can seamlessly integrate as citizens so aligning education systems and career to the national development goals uh, Finland has achieved a remarkable balance between the academic and vocational education. This is something uh, we, which other countries have implemented and it's practical. We can learn from countries like South Korea, Singapore, Ireland, Canada, Japan, which have invested in leading education policies, which have resulted in widespread economic development. So let's ensure our education systems sets our path up for success to be competitive at global level so the education policy and the future is ready for everyone one people this is what president also jamisa said and this is a very very important uh education policy from the people's president advocate noson jamisa so um, yes you always find uh, some people who criticize uh, this thinking simply because of hatred. Nelson Chamisa never asked for sanctions. Nelson Chamisa said, let us deal with the reasons why sanctions were brought onto the nation of Zimbabwe. Let us make sure that we sincerely deal with those issues. We take a look what we can do as a nation, something which do not affect our sovereignty. We implement those and we leave out those which affect our sovereignty then we go to negotiate and say no we have done a b c d but we cannot do a b c d then after we have done that um we we we, we move more importantly the issue is not about sanctions the issue is about focusing on more important issues of equally distributing resources just imagine my resources that now monica are kungo buddhist quality thing is for mahala if these resources were being channeled towards the development of zimbabwe so it's 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 very important in Zimbabwe to understand. And thank you very much for coming. Let us meet in other episodes as well as other broadcasts.